the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Sweet Dreaming. wear a string around your finger to remind yourself of something to do? Well, I've had a string around one of mine all day, so I wouldn't forget that this is my last chance to make a suggestion to brand new June brides in this month of June. When you set up that exciting new home, whether it's a small apartment or a big house, you're going to have linoleum on your kitchen or kitchenette floor. You'll pick out a lovely pattern, and the freshness of the colors will make the kitchen such a cheerful place to work in. Now, wouldn't you like to keep the linoleum looking fresh and new? You can easily by protecting it right now with Johnson Self-Polishing Glow Coat and periodically giving it another glow coat application. There's practically no work to it, no rubbing or buffing. You simply apply and let dry. In 20 minutes, the linoleum will be sparkling with beauty that is safe against scratches, wear, and dirt. Glow Coat makes linoleum last much longer. You can use Glow Coat, of course, on your other floors, too. So get that good old Glow Coat labor-saving habit. Order Johnson's self-polishing glow coat right away. When you're frantically packing to go away, there are a thousand and one details to take care of. And the division of labor is the same at 79 Westful Vista as in any other home. The wife does a thousand things and the husband does one. You know who we mean. Fibber McGee and Molly. Did you call the gas company, McGee? Did I, baby, what I call that gas company. (laughs) They says they couldn't come out to shut off the gas till a week from Wednesday. And I says, oh, no, I says, and they says, no, and I says, Never mind the snappy dialogue, baby. (laughs) How about the telephone? I'm not going to take any chances with them. I'll cut the wires just before we leave the house. <laughs> now, let me see. I've got to put the car in the dead storage. See the oh, dear. Come in. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? I'm Dr. Davenport, Mr. McGee, oh. from the Here Today and Gone Tomorrow Insurance Company. I believe you applied for additional insurance. Oh, did you, McGee? Yes, I, I, I thought I'd better, Molly. You know how it is. If we're going to be in the movies, I can't be too careful. <laughs> Might have to do stunts like leaping off a boxcar onto an airplane or something. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. What you go through for your public. Yeah. And vice versa. <laughs> now, if you just open the top of your bathrobe, Mr. McGee. Ah, that's it. Yes, 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 yes. Now, don't, don't, don't worry about my chest, Doc. It's as sound as a dollar. Try it with inflation. <laughs> I hope I'm not here at an inconvenient time, Mrs. McGee. Oh, you are, Doctor, but so are we, and there's nothing to be done about it. You go ahead and examine my husband. I'll just go about my work. Hey, Molly, don't forget to call the light company now. For the last time, McGee, I tell you, they won't buy back those burnt-out bulbs. <laughs> but they got it. I've been saving them for two years. Please, Mr. McGee, hold still. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. How's my heart, Doc? Well, I can tell better if you'll stop talking a moment. Okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, splendid, splendid. Now the lungs, please. Oh, my lungs are fine, Doc. I take setting up exercises every morning. You do? Oh, sure he does. He sets up, takes a look at the clock, groans and collapses again. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'll run upstairs and tax... Oh, my... That's the telephone ringing, Doc. <laughs> excuse me a minute. Hello, Fibber McGee speaking. Who? Whistful Vista Gazette? Oh, Oh, yeah. Well, look. Forward our subscription to us in care of the RKO Studios, Hollywood, California. Yeah. Be glad to get the Gazette out there. Yeah. I'll never get so big as an actor that I'll forget the old hometown. <laughs> I'll say you won't. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. What'd you say, Molly? <laughs> never mind. Now, as soon as the doctor gets through with you, McGee... <clears throat> You run around the house and see that all the windows are locked. Okay, the lock's busted off the kitchen window, but I'll put a mousetrap on the windowsill. 
That'll be fine. When we come back, we'll find three strange fingers and no silverware. Uh, please sit down, Mr. McGee, and cross one leg over the other. Oh, okay, Doc. Uh, which leg do you want crossed over the other? I can do it either way. <laughs> Pretty agile for a guy my age. <laughs> either one, either one. I'm just testing your reflexes. Ow! Oh, fine, fine, fine. Yes, 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 yes. Now the other one, please. Oh! Hey, you gotta hit me so hard, Doc. Sorry, I'm sorry, but I must emphasize the flexion to counteract the state of nervous tension attendant on the current state of excitement. Otherwise, the diagnosis might be minimized to a deleterious degree. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I, I understand that all right. <laughs> you do? Oh, sure. Then I wish you'd explain it to me. I muffed it all through medical school. <laughs> yes. McGee. Yeah? Have you got the railroad tickets? Sure, I got them right here. You see, Doc? Well, don't show them to me. I'm not going anywhere. Oh. Don't lose them, McGee. Don't worry. I pride myself on never losing railroad tickets. Well, as long as we've always gone places by bus, that's nothing to brag about. <laughs> Is he in pretty good condition, Doctor? Well, apparently, Mrs. McGee, apparently. You a heavy smoker, Mr. McGee? He doesn't use tobacco in any form, Doctor. Why, Molly, how can you... I smoke ten cigars a day, and you know it. You call those tobacco? If that isn't alfalfa... I'll eat it. Oh, dear. Put your bathrobe back on, McGee. It's Mrs. Uppington. Oh, what does that old moose want? She's about as opportune as a hailstorm on a hayride. Now, listen here. Be nice to her, dearie. We won't be seeing her all summer. You know that. Oh, that's right. Come in, Abigail. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Mr. McGee, I... Oh, I'm so sorry. Am I intruding? Oh, not at all, Uppy. You met Dr. Davenport. Uh, Doc, this is Mrs. Uppington, who is high C in our social scale. Oh, please, Mr. McGee. <laughs> How do you do, Doctor? <laughs> Mrs. Uppington, I hope you don't mind if I proceed with Mr. McGee's examination. Oh, of course not, Doctor. Don't mind me. <laughs> Your teeth seem to be in good shape. Thank you. Everyone says that. Oh, I... he means McGee, Abigail. Oh, of course. Silly of me. <laughs> oh, tell me, my dear, is it true that you're going to Hollywood to act in a motion picture with Edgar Bergen? Mm, yes, it is, Abigail. Isn't it thrilling? Oh, promise me you'll do something for me, dear. While you're out there... You ought to have your tonsils out. Really? I didn't realize... He means me, Uppy. Oh. How's my weight, Doc? Well, you're a bit pudgy about the pistol pockets, McGee. <laughs> What uh, games do you play? Well, let's see. Uh, uh, what can we do for you in Hollywood, Abigail? Well, my dear, I've always been a bit of a... Rummy. A bit of a rummy, and I... Now, please. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you, Uppy. Doc asked me what games I play. <laughs> Maybe we better go in the other room, Abigail, while the doctor finishes with McGee. Oh, don't mind us. It's good for the patient to be thinking of something else during the examination. Oh. Now, I'd like to take your blood pressure, Mr. McGee. Uh, roll up your sleeve, please. Okay. You'll pardon my nude biceps, Uppy. <laughs> oh, certainly. Let's have no false modesty, Mr. McGee. <laughs> but as I was saying, when you get to Hollywood, my dear, yeah. will you please look up Hedda Hopper and ask where she gets those perfectly ducky hats? I think I could wear the same type because everyone says my face is... Well, below normal. <laughs> I beg your pardon, I... Oh, you you meant Mr. McGee's blood pressure, of course. Uh, did you, Doc? Yes, 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 certainly. <laughs> now, your waistline, Mr. McGee. Where's my tape measure? Oh, here it is. Now, stand still, please. Well, I'm not sure we'll meet Hedda Hopper, Abigail, but I'll certainly ask her about the hats, because she and you must be about the same age. Thirty-nine. Honest, I'd have swore it was only thirty-seven. Oh, now, boys, you flatter He us. meant my waistline. <laughs> you eat too much, dearie. Why, Mrs. McGee, I don't. She means her husband. Who's that? Who, your husband? Why, he's this man right here. I meant the man at the door. Well, what makes you think the man at the door eats too much? Dad, rather go to the door, somebody. We got to get going. Molly, take up me away. Hurry up, Doc. Can't you see we got to get going? Yes, I
trunk's all packed, dearie. Did you finish with the insurance doctor? Yes, he's all through. He's gone. All but a couple of the usual details. <clears throat> hey, did you call the dairy to tell him we won't want any more milk? No, I've been too busy. You call him. Okay, give me the phone. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the whistle, Mr. Derrick. Oh, is that you, Mert? Oh, <laughs> my. How's every little thing, Mert? It is, eh? What's that, Mert? Your sister's wedding. Oh, that's terrible. Train wreck, eh? Oh, heavenly days, McGee. What happened? Her sister got her wedding dress caught on one of the pews and wrecked her train. <laughs> What's that, Mert? Yeah, we're going to Hollywood. Going to be stars in the cinema. <laughs> yeah. Huh? What do you mean you'll take vanilla? I says cinema, not cinnamon. <laughs> oh, okay, Mert. <laughs> I'll call the dairy later. Goodbye. Now, let's see, Molly. I think we better... Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Now what? Come in. Hello, kids. Say, I hear you're going to Hollywood to make a movie. Is that right? Probably not, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> Why, old-timer? Look, if you meet Lana Turner, tell her I'm knitting her a sweater, will you, kid? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think she has a sweater, Mr. Oldtimer. Yeah. She's got a hundred sweaters. And that ain't Hayes. <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I heard it. The way I heard it, one feller says, t'other feller, say, says. <laughs> See where Fibber McGee and Molly are going to make a picture call? Look who's laughing. Ain't that terrible? What's terrible about it, says t'other feller. Well, says the first feller, can't you just hear the critics saying, we'll bite who is? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing personal, kids. I sure hope you make good, and I know you will, because other people have who can't act half as good as you can, which ain't saying much. Though so personally, I think you've got what it takes. If you don't take too much... If it does, you can always go back on the radio, and that's what some people are saying already. Oh, now they've gone back on the radio. <laughs> For shame, kids. What on earth was he talking about? I don't know. That old fuddy-duddy wouldn't know which end was up at a fraternity initiation. <laughs> Let's see. I you better, better get... get out of that bathrobe and into some clothes, dear. Oh, I don't want to get dressed till the last minute. Too much to do. Say, did you tell Uncle Dennis we were going away? Sure, I told him. But you know, he hates Hollywood. Why? Well, on account of Sonia Henney, mostly. Why, Sonia's a cute kid. I What's know. he got against her? Well, he thinks it's a crime to make all that ice and then skate on it. <laughs> well. Hey, folks. When are you leaving for the coast? Oh, hi, Harlow. We're leaving in about an hour. Why? Well, when are you coming back to Wistful Vista? The last Tuesday in September, Mr. Wilcox. We're going to Hollywood to make a moving picture. Yeah. A talking picture, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I want to talk to you about. I've got a marvelous idea for a movie story. And if you sell it, I'll give you 50% of whatever you get. 50% of a dirty look is hardly worth the effort. <laughs> yeah, besides, what do you know about film stories? What do you mean, what do I know about them? Oh. Why, I've helped write the greatest film story ever produced. Oh, mm. I shouldn't have said it. I hadn't heard about that. Molly, you've been hearing it for six and a half years. Mm. All about how Johnson's Wax puts a film of protection against dust and dirt and dampness on your floors and furniture and woodwork. Ladies and gentlemen, after this little lecture is over, we will pass a hat among yous after we pull it down over Wilcox's ears. <laughs> Don't mind him, Mr. Wilcox. What's the rest of the scenario? Well, it's a very simple story, but it's got everything. Glamour, love interest, conflict, and comedy value. Oh. The glamour of a beautiful, well-kept home. The love of a housewife for something that saves her so much time and effort. And conflict between Johnson's wax and the wicked effects of dust and dirt. Where's the comedy come in, Mr. Cecil B. D. Wilcox? <laughs> Well, come to think of it, it's too serious a subject for comedy. Oh. And anyway, with Johnson's wax on the furniture, you can't expect to see marks, brothers. Oh. oh. Yeah, you, you'll feel better after you rest 13 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy your trip, folks, and I'll see you in the fall. So long. Goodbye, Mr. Wilcox. Have a nice summer. So long, Harlow. Marks Brothers. Wow. That guy's going to wind up with his arm in a sling, reaching for him like that. <laughs> Incidentally, McGee, I want to hear all the Johnson Wax shows this summer. Yeah? You know, I think Ransom Sherman is a very funny man. Yeah? They're going to call him haphazard on the radio. Well, I hope he doesn't get too funny, because... <laughs> Heavenly days, we'll never get ready to go this way. Come in. 
Hello, Mr. McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Oh, hi, Wimple. Won't you come in and sit down, Mr. Wimple? Oh, no, thank you, Mrs. McGee. I just wanted to come and tell you goodbye for the summer and wish you a very nice vacation. <laughs> well, thanks, Wimple. You going away yourself? No, I don't think so. I should go away for my health, but my wife doesn't want me to. Oh. <laughs> well, why don't you go away if it's for your health? The healthiest thing I can do, Mrs. McGee, is not argue with my wife. <laughs> well, it was on a vacation trip that I met her, you know. Oh, on a vacation trip. That's very romantic. Yes. She was paddling a canoe and it tipped over. I swam out and rescued her. Oh, that's wonderful. A hero. Mm, that was very brave of you, Mr. Wimple. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I had it all to do over again. <laughs> Goodbye for now. Oh, don't be in a hurry, Wimple. <laughs> Stick around and breathe the air of freedom for a while. Oh, I, I simply can't, Mr. McGee. I'm working tonight, carrying water for the elephants, you know. Oh, is there a circus in town? Uh, what? Is there a circus plan here? Uh, oh, oh, no. <laughs> the elephants? Uh-huh. That's the name of my wife's softball team. <laughs> I, I carry water for them. Well, do have a nice trip and goodbye. Poor Mr. Wimple. He has a fairly cheerful outlook for such a henpecked little fella. Well, that's easily explained. He's been under his wife's thumb so long he's looking at the world through rose-colored nail polish. <laughs> Hey, we better get busy, Molly. Our train leaves in 25 minutes. Well, I'm all ready, McGee. I just want to shut off the refrigerator. Say, what is this anyway? We may not enjoy packing up, but the front door's getting an awful bang out of it. I can... Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. I haven't got time to talk to you now. Why? Well, we're packing up. That's why we're going away for a vacation. Gee, what you want to go away for, hmm? I had mine right here. Oh, have you had your vacation? Sure. Right here on my arm, see? It hurt like 62. <laughs> That's a vaccination. I was talking about vacation. Oh. Well, where are you going on your vaccination? Hmm? Where are you? Hollywood, sis. We're going to be in a movie. Gee, honest? Uh-huh. Hey, hey, will you send me a photograph of my favorite actor when you get out there, mister? Hmm, will you? Hmm? Why, certainly, sis. We'll be palling around with all them big stars. You'll be seeing pictures of me posing in front of my swimming pool, riding around in a big limousine, sailing around on a yacht with the big shots. Oh. So name your star, sis. I'll get his photo for you. Anybody, mister? Anybody. Name the biggest star you can think of, and I'll bet within three weeks, me and him will be wearing each other's clothes. <laughs> Eating all our meals together, going to nightclubs uh... together. Going for long walks, posing for publicity shots together. Why, me and him will probably be known as the Damon and Pythias of Hollywood. Oh, uh... Gee, that will be wonderful, mister. Yeah. <laughs> Send me a picture of him wearing your clothes, will you? <laughs> I don't know what's so hysterically oh. funny about that, sis. Who is your favorite star? <laughs> Gene Autry's heart. <laughs> The King's Men are very happy to repeat their popular version of The Reluctant Dragon. One fine day while on my way to Ipswich by the sea, I met a rather charming chap who asked me into tea. It seems he was a dragon, you know the kind with wings, teeth and tails and claws and scales and all those dragon-like details. I admit I jumped a bit when he began to sing. I'm the reluctant dragon, what ho, quite so, the very reluctant dragon, oh very, very, don't you know, they call me the timid dragon, what rot, I'm not, I just won't fight, I don't rather play, I know I shan't get hurt that way, here we go gathering nuts in May, I'm so reluctant, oh so reluctant, after we had sipped our tea, a thought popped in my head, a dragon here, by Jove, that's queer, he really should be dead. I said, I say, look here, I said. Aren't you a bit extinct? He looked at me and gave a cry and wiped a teardrop from his eye. Heaved his bosom with a sigh. Then he coyly winked. I'm the reluctant dragon. Boom, boom. That's me. Carefree. I'm the reluctant dragon. Free 
reluctant since 1911 B.C. Could be they call me the timid. Should I go? La 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 la. What rot? What a lot of rot. I'm not. What a lot of rot. When others fight, I run away. I guess that I was born that way. I'm to be queen of the May today. I'm the reluctant dragon. I'm frail and pale. The awful reluctant dragon. Don't step on my tail. They call me the timid dragon. What rot? I'm not. I just won't fight. I'd rather play. I know I shan't. Get hurt that way. Here we go gathering nuts in May. Nuts in May. Nuts in May. I'm so reluctant. Woo. Yup, 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 yup. And furthermore, Gildersleeve, that's the silliest idea I ever heard of. Well, by George McGee, if you weren't so thick... Well, what so is thick... Mr. Gildersleeve's idea, McGee? He says we ought to... What we ought to do is have somebody live in this house while we're gone. Ain't that dumb? Well, I don't know if I thought we could sublet it to the right people. Well, I didn't exactly mean sublet, Mrs. McGee. I had more in mind the care of your house. Oh. Imagine coming back in the fall to a nice clean house. Windows washed. Furniture all Johnson's waxed and polished. Shelves cleaned. Wouldn't that be worth more than any petty little sum you might get for rent? Well, it almost is to me, Mr. Gildersleeve. I wonder who we could get, though. Well, uh, <laughs> it just happens that my wife's brother and his family are going to be here all summer, and I thought... Uh... Oh, no, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to chisel some free lodging for your relatives, eh, Gildersleeve? Well... Well, you can just keep the visiting fireman on your own hook and ladder. <laughs> now, McGee, I don't think Mr. Gildersleeve meant... That's anything. all right, Mrs. McGee. I'm not angry. I won't see my little chum until last week in September, and I refuse to quarrel with him. <laughs> my goodness, I'll miss you, little pal. Ah, yeah. uh, shucks. The Spanish serenader's coming out in him. <laughs> I what are you get... after, anyway, Gildersleeve? The use of our lawnmower for the summer? What did you say? I said, what are you after? The use of our lawnmower for the summer or something? In the first place, it isn't your lawnmower. It's mine. And in the second place... What do you mean, it's your lawnmower? Just because I let you borrow it once or twice. That's all right, McGee. I was glad to get it back, if only for a day or so. (laughs) He's right, McGee. It is his lawnmower. Oh, yeah? It's my lawnmower, and I can prove it. I know exactly where the bill of sale is. Where? Right here in the hall closet. (laughs) (laughs) I straightened it out this morning, (laughs) dear. Well, where's that bill of sale? Okay, so it's your lawnmower. Take your old clover clipper, Gildersleeve. I'm a movie actor now anyway. I ain't mowing my own lawn anymore. You're not, eh? (laughs) You probably will be too busy at that. Yes. Mowing other people's lawns. (laughs) You don't seem to have much faith in McGee's future in Hollywood, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mrs. McGee, if all his fans were gathered in one spot, they wouldn't make enough breeze to ruffle baby Sandy's hair ribbon. (laughs) You wait, Gildersleeve. You'll be reading in the papers about me. Hometown boy makes good. Read the rest of it, McGee. Huh? Hometown boy makes good time hitchhiking home from coast. (laughs) Now you look here, you All right, boys, that's enough. Do you realize we only have a few minutes to catch our train, dearie? Oh, boy, that's right. Uh, Go on home, Gildersleeve. Can't you see you're holding us up? That's all right. If I have to pay more than a dime to see you in the movies, you'll be holding me up. (laughs) (laughs) Have a nice trip, Mrs. McGee. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, Uh, and goodbye. Goodbye, little chum. So long, (laughs) Trucky. got to hurry like everything. You sure you got the railroad tickets? Yes, yes, yes. I got the tickets. Here, you see? Did you send for a taxi cab? Yes, it ought to be here any minute. Now, how about the trunks? Are they on the way to the station? Shucks, they're all in the baggage car by this time. I sent them trunks down there long ago. You did? You got to hand it to me, Molly. I'm efficient at this traveling business. I think of everything. Well, I guess you do at that, dearie. Now, hurry up and get out of that bathrobe and into some clothes. We've got to go. Okay, I'll run upstairs and... What's the matter? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I... I ain't got any clothes. I packed them all in the trunk. Oh, heavenly days. How are we going to... There's the taxi cab. What are we going to do? Oh, I don't know. I can't go to the station in my bathrobe. Oh, hand me the phone quick. Hello, operator. Uh, Give me the union station. Uh, No, 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 Mert. I haven't time for one of those now. (laughs) Get me the union station. Hello, union station. Uh, Mrs. McGee calling. We're leaving on the train in ten minutes for the coast. And my husband... Oh, boy, am I sick. My husband is sick, so have a wheelchair meet us at the taxi entrance. 
Thank huh? you. Get your hat, dearie. I'll get a blanket. Yeah, uh, give me some paste powder. I want to look pale. Okay. Okay. Come on, McGee. Oh. Hollywood, here we come the hard way. <laughs> Bibber and Molly will be back in just a moment. Say, next time you go shopping, stop a moment just before you're ready to pay your bill and ask yourself, have I forgotten anything? Isn't there something that comes in a red and yellow package that I was going to buy? Oh, yes, Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. You know, it would really be too bad not to have glow coat in the house. Imagine going back to the tiresome, back-breaking job of floor scrubbing. Makes you tired to think of it, doesn't it? Seriously, it would be bad. Bad for you and bad for your linoleum because continual scrubbing ruins linoleum. Glow Coat, on the other hand, protects linoleum. Protects it against scratches, wear, and dirt. Protects it with a hard, beautiful polish that keeps the colors fresh and bright. Johnson's Glow Coat is called self-polishing because it needs no rubbing or buffing. Just apply and let dry. If you aren't already a Glow Coat user, try it just once, won't you? Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we want to thank all of you for your wonderful support and encouragement during the past year. It's people like you who make people like us like people like you. <laughs> and we wish uh, the new Johnson Wax show, Haphazard, starring Ransom Sherman, all the success in the world. We think the sponsor has made a great choice in him, and he's made a great choice in sponsors. Don't you think so, McGee? Uh, I don't know. What? After all the Johnson Wax people have done for us? Uh. What's the matter with you? Well, take a look. Almost seven years on the air for them, and what have I got? No pants. Oh, my. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for the home and for industry. Inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night for the premiere of the new Johnson summer show, Haphazard, starring Ransom Sherman. And we remind you that America's first line of defense is you and your support. So invest to the best of your ability in defense savings bonds. Good night. Yes, it certainly pays to keep that car of yours looking its best. It's good business, and you get more pleasure out of a car that's wax-polished. That's why car owners have welcomed Johnson's Car New, the easy-to-use auto polish that both cleans and wax polishes in one application. Two jobs at the same time. Give your car a Car New beauty treatment. The cost is low, the result's amazing. Ask for Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N.